Good evening. We've now returned from executive session. We'll reconvene our Board of Education meeting. Uh, we'll start with building updates. Mr. Levini. Nice. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. High School. For the Pew High School's building updates, I'd like to introduce sophomore Z Zanae Soto Martinez. Casino, 
and the DMS lead crew work together to plan out each day and the activities that go with them. The plan for this year is for each deal day to have a new character tree and focus on that character tree. December 1st is the spelling bee preliminary test and this annual spelling bee has been a long-standing tradition and this provides a valuable educational experience for students. This also promotes literacy and allows students to engage in a healthy competition. And as I said, December 1st is the preliminary te test and January 13th is the spelling bee finals in the DePue High School Auditorium. Our school spelling bee champion will advance to the Western New York Spelling Bee sponsored by the Batavia Newspaper Corporation. The winner of that event will compete in the Scripps National Spelling Bee in Washington, D.C. December 2nd and, through, and also December 6th is, are the parent-teacher conferences. December 6th is the middle school band concert. December 7th is the 6th grade honor roll breakfast. December 8th is the 7th grade honor roll breakfast. Also December 8th is the middle school chorus concert. December 9th is the 8th grade honor roll breakfast. And December 15th is the PTSO meeting, 3.30 p.m. in the high school office. Thank you. Good evening. I would like to introduce third grade student Colton Stone. Cayuga Heights building update. We are almost finished with our first trimester of school for the year. Teachers are testing reading levels and getting ready to enter report cards. We have a number of activities coming up. These include November 24th to 26th, Thanksgiving recess, December 1st, PTO meeting at 7 p.m., December 2nd, early dismissal at noon and parent-teacher conferences from 1 to 7 p.m., December 3rd, early dismissal at noon and the end of the first trimester, December 6th, Early dismissal at noon and parent-teacher conferences from 1 to 3 p.m. December 7th, 4th and 5th winter band and chorus concert at 7 p.m. December 7th, 12 days of holidays around the world starts. December 13th to 17th, Mary Moo Shop sponsored by PTO. December 16th, Report cards sent home with students. December 17th, Frozen Snowman Day. December 20th, Grinch Day. December 21st, North Pole Character Day. December 22nd, Regina Day. The PTO will be sponsoring the Cayuga Heights Penny Wars once again this year from December 1st to 17th. All money raised will go to Oshag Children's Hospital in honor of one of our Cayuga students. Fantastic. Thank you all for the updates. Really appreciate that. Brings us to our first presentation, K-12 Mathematics. Uh, Ms. Besh, Garber, and... Great job, boys and girls. Well, actually, girls and boys. <laughs>
reason it's not working for the projector right now. Um, we tested it earlier, it's working. It's not working right now. I have to run and give one of the big TVs on a stand. What's that? No, we have, we have the presentation yeah. in front of us. Okay. All right. Yeah, if you're able to get it working while they're talking, that'd be great. Okay. The board okay with that? Yep. Okay, so um, Cuba's instructional leadership team decided to make fluency our goal this year. The district purchased the building back fluency kits for addition and subtraction for grades K to 2 and multiplication and divisions for grades 3 to 5 for all classrooms at Cuba. Um, I'm going to give a quick overview and be mindful of your time. However, I encourage you as the board to come and visit and observe what's happening in our Cuba classrooms. Um, with the implementation of these kits. It's quite exciting to see. Um, my words in the presentation can't capture the student participation and the connections that are being made with the children. Um, these kits are brand new and were developed by Graham Fletcher and Tracy Johnson Zager. They are two classroom teachers and math leaders in elementary education. They are published by Stenhouse. However, they are teacher created, modeling the best practices in elementary mathematics. Um, I know that Mike spoke to me earlier and said that um, even though the, that is not working, there is a video inside there that you should be able to access. And those are our 811 children who are finding success with the kits. So um, it's happening throughout the building, even with our children who are, are at the lower levels. Um, throughout the kit, each lesson string is student-centered and student-driven. Students build on their prior knowledge to make connections between math and the real world and to build concepts of fluency. Um, we're taking students from rote memorization to meaningful memorization and helping them to see that connection with math and how it relates. It's all research-based, um, teaching with best practices, and the student, um, students are engaged and they're deep in conversation throughout the whole experience. Um, the K-2 um, section has image talks. Um, on the slides, you're going to see student-created anchor charts where the teachers are collecting um, responses from the students as they're sharing. And then you also see student work um, that is generated from um, the student, the student uh, lesson. Our kits were distributed at the end of September and mid-October, and teachers at the grade levels are beginning stages of rolling out the lesson strings to our students. However, the feedback from their teachers is very encouraging at this time. Teachers have stated that our students are at a wide range of abilities, which is expected and anticipated, especially in this climate. Um, they are excited because the lesson strings are giving all students um, entry into the lesson at their independent level, and students at our, all levels are getting to participate with confidence. Activity and participation is exciting to see. Some teacher quotes um, voiced in this introductory period already include, I'm loving the student conversations I'm hearing already. There is more student engagement and conversations appearing in the classroom setting. Talks are also leading to other topics in math in, in addition to fluency. We've been rocking the kids. Students who have struggled in the past have voiced that their math talk time is the favorite part of the day. Um, during the spring, students are active, they turn and talk, they notice and wonder, they share what's the same, different, what's changed, whether it's a picture or a conversation, um, things with words and um, visuals, and they see um, their connection to math in the real world. They're learning to make sense of numbers, of the symbols and the word problems that have been a struggle in the past. In addition, math is connecting topics later within other areas of the math curriculum and other curricular areas. Teachers are supported within the kit with a variety of professional development videos that they can access at any time um, support is needed as an individual. And then as a TOSA, I am able to push into the classroom um, to model lessons and to support teachers and to co-teach together. Um, one teacher stated, I love seeing you model our new building back fluency kit because it gives me more conf confidence on how to execute the lessons. I'm excited to say that the feedback from our teachers, our students, and even our administrators has been very encouraging, and I can't wait to see how our students progress as their confidence in math grows. Um, thank you for supporting us, and do you have any questions? Thank you.
everybody. Um, I first want to um, send Mrs. Garber's apologies for not being able to be here today. She is at Buff State this evening um, working on a project with the Master's Teachers Program. So she asked if I would share some updates from the middle school. So the middle school mathematics department took full advantage of our soft opening again this year to focus on growth mindset activities and to develop relationships with our new students. <laughs> Mood lighting. <laughs> this is such an important part of setting the tone for a successful school year. On the following slide, which perhaps we'll see, you will see one of our SEL activities that our students worked on in the beginning of the year, focusing on growth mindset and the power of yet, but help students persevere through our challenging curriculum and face struggles with a positive attitude in order to create a community of mathematicians that are making progress together. In the middle school, we are using a common curriculum of EMAP instruction, which we supplement with a variety of engaging learning activities such as IXL, Edpuzzle, FinTech quizzes, Kahoot, pixel art assignments, Delta Math, etc. Many of these assignments are self-correcting and students report enjoying the instant feedback that comes with this type of activity. We are also focused on SEL activities that we will spiral in all year to keep building relationships to foster a classroom of mathematicians that are accomplishing goals together. The different types of activities give us the opportunity to check in with our students and build important relationships and connections. At the end of last year and during the summer, we met as a middle school mathematics team to discuss curriculum gaps that we would be facing due to our hybrid and remote learning environment of last school year. We are working on entering common formative assessments into Schoology with the assistance of our technology integrator, Mr. Odessa, in order to discuss student progress on key standards. This also gives the students an opportunity to practice taking assessments electronically as the middle school administers our state tests on the computer. We are able to pull data on specific questions and standards to make sure that we spiral in concepts that may be a little more challenging and students may need work on mastery. So moving on to the high school, um, the high school is excited to be using two excellent technology tools this year. Uh, over the summer, several high school math teachers completed an online course teaching us how to code the computational layer of Desmos activities. And what this program does is it enables the activities to incorporate animation, provide self-checking tasks, and really keep students engaged while learning. Um, I have a couple of quotes that I will just read. They were on the slide, but here I had students do a reflection at the end of the five weeks to talk about what they liked about it, to see if it, they were worth continuing, or if we should work on incorporating some other things. And here are four um, responses from the students. One student named Connor said, Desmos is great, with a partner and individually. It allows for things some websites just can't do, and it's fun. Camille wrote, I like when we do them independently, and when we get them wrong, I get a better understanding of it. Elise said, they're very fun and help my understanding, and Alex just said, because Desmos is fun. So, um, you giggle, but to get a ninth grader to say math is fun, I'm going to take that as a plus, right? Like, that's a great thing. A second program that we used is Delta Math. And Delta Math is a tool that allows students to practice and improve understanding while scaffolding learning opportunities and allowing for differentiation with its work through solutions and video help. Um, so a couple of student responses to that is it helps you if you don't understand something, and I like that it shows you if you got the question right or not and lets you retry until you get it. So I found that in the past, a lot of times with math homework, students were just getting it done or copying it from someone. Here, kids are learning from it and they don't move on until it's correct. And there's videos that work them through and there's work through examples and they can stop and ask for help. And it just really kind of meets kids where they are. Because we know that certain kids are ready to move on and some kids really need a lot more support, especially with the last year and a half. So um, thank you very much for your time today. Thank you very much, Math Department. Appreciate all your hard work.
I'm going to wait and see if we're able to get this on the screen yet. Just a moment for your uh, patience. Okay. 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 What are the chances, uh, Drew, that we're going to be able to see something on the screen tonight? Um, I think the chances would be better if I'm going to go grab the TV, one of those TVs, and roll it down here. Because whatever reason, this port sound here seems like it's a problem. And it's just not sending anything to the projector. Okay. Um, I can roll one of the TVs down here. Is there a chance that that one is at a different port? Everything goes through here and just splits it off in there. Are you trying to kick it? I've uh, tried bending the prongs. I'm kind of... Uh, I do. Yeah, we do lots of the power. Yeah. We'll have a cap. We'll just read from that. We'll just work through it that way. Sorry. Okay, we have... Uh, uh, hold on one second. My paperwork here. Dr. Lynn Fusco, Erie One Bosey's District Superintendent, and Nancy Bojanowski, Human Resources Director, Erie One Bosey's. Uh, giving them provide the board with their superintendent search thought exchange results. Thank you very much. Before I get started, I just wanted to say what a testament to this district. The three students who were up here giving you the updates, how well spoken and articulate and poised in front of a microphone. That was really wonderful. So thank you for having those presentations. They really um, give kids an opportunity to shine. Um, Tonight, I'd like to share with the board and to the extent that we are having this conversation with the public who's in attendance, um, the results of the Thought Exchange Survey. The Thought Exchange Survey is a part of the superintendent um, search. And I know the board was very much interested in getting as much um, information from the community as you engage in the searches as possible. And that was the genesis for the Thought Exchange um, to go out to the community. So thought exchange, as you probably well know, because you do use thought exchange in the district pretty frequently, gives the community of responders the opportunity to share their thoughts in their own words um, to questions that are posed on a topic. It also allows others to read and review, then rank those thoughts as well as then takes all of that information, all of those thoughts, and uses keywords to cluster them together, and then rank those um, key thoughts into themes. So what I'd like to give you the responses to first is the first question that was asked of um, the DePew community at large. What qualities and or characteristics are essential for the next superintendent to possess? And generally, the participation breakdown was that we had 103 participants. There were 58 initial thoughts, and then 1,587 rankings based on those thoughts. The participant groups, in terms of stakeholders, was um, very interesting. We had 44% of the respondents were parents, 6% were students. 12% were community members. Oh my goodness. Thank you very much. All right. We are in business. You are good. The math department can now give their presentation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm showing the video that I made at the end. If you can go back. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. For you? Yes. <laughs> Wait. Thank you, Drew. <laughs> Um, so we had 12% as uh, community members, 35% of the respondents were teachers and administrators, 12% support staff, and five classified themselves as other. One of the great things I think about thought exchange is it creates um, a wordle. And what you see there are in the size of the text, the 
value that was placed on that attribute. So in looking at that word cloud, I'm sorry, not word, oh, word cloud, you can see that communication, information skills, community, compassion, district work, those were the themes that came to the forefront um, as people were sharing their thoughts. So, um, to question one, the key themes evolved. That there's full transparency when communicating, even if unpopular or difficult. Strong communication skills. It's important for people to feel comfortable having a dialogue with new leaders. And then communication and transparency. And as I said, from the word cloud, you could see that communication was the largest of the um, text. So understanding, again, in response to question one, um, work ethic, loyalty, immersing uh, themselves in the community and understanding the needs of the students and community, committed, someone who is committed to the long-term health of the district, uh, the new superintendent should be committed to the long-term positive growth and development of the district. Compassion, again, that was another large text item in that word cloud. To understand the problems that students face today, and we all know coming out of the pandemic, hopefully coming out, we're someplace along that continuum. Um, you know, we all know that having a level of compassion for what our students and our staff have gone through in the past 20 some odd months um, is really an important skill. Um, again, to question one, um, being visible in buildings, uh, knowledgeable about how the three buildings run, uh, visible in the buildings, which is just a repeat. It would be nice to see uh, the superintendent visit all buildings regularly. Uh, communication plans, full transparency when communicating, someone who has strong communication skills. Um, again, important for people to feel comfortable. Um, a clear communication, ability to communicate with parents has become so important over the past two school years and I think we all value um, the communication that has taken place as well as what needs to take place in the future. Again, another theme, listening to parents, putting safety first, it's about keeping our kids safe and protected and I think the environment, again, that we are in currently underscores that. Um, someone who's approachable, uh, parents feel that they can come to them with concerns regarding their student um, school and uh, that that person would be open to listen and understand from that perspective um, and a level of understanding of parents' concerns and ideas. Um, bless you. This is another one that I think given where we are uh, right now, uh, politically and in education, um, in terms of initiatives, keep the focus on a quality education for all students. Each and every student deserves the best education. Understanding and making fair decisions. Um, and then to the political issue, you know, being apolitical. That politics should be kept as far as reasonable from education. And then there are those comments that were made and starred that were unthemed. They didn't seem to fall into um, those clusters of thoughts. Um, communication and transparency runs throughout. Someone that will protect the well-being and safety of the students, again, in this environment that really is um, of prime importance to families. It's important for all children to feel safe while in school because these early years of schooling will impact the success. And again, compassion for students and preserving the best educational opportunities while maintaining a responsible budget and property values. So the second question that was posed on the website, um, what are the most important strengths and challenges of DePew that our new superintendent should be made aware of to be successful? Again, a breakdown of um, participation. There were 
three participants, 40 thoughts, 811 ratings. Um, and again, you can see the distribution of um, stakeholder groups that participated in question number two is very much similar to those that participated in question one. And you can see again in the word cloud, the largest text is maintaining this district um, in the um, state that it is in. And you will see a few comments as we go through about um, the wonderful programs that you provide, the solid educational program for students. And in addition to maintaining support and um, positive staffing, and just to continue what the district is doing as well as moving forward in the path that you are all on already. So again, the key themes, that Depew is a small district with great programming. So maintain the great programs and educational opportunities despite the small size. Staffing, we need to be more competitive to attract and keep staff. Um, and just parenthetically, staffing is an issue for most of the districts across New York State um, and particularly in Western New York. To maintain, again, going back to that maintaining, maintain the momentum educationally. We've made strides programmatically and with students' success and achievement, that needs to continue. Okay, I did something funky here. Thank you, Drew. Um, that Depew has very positive staff. But again, staffing, we need to be competitive to attract and retain staff. And maintain consistent support staff and substitutes has been a challenge. Again, that's something that's across the, the state. And most importantly, um, continue our positive path forward. And then some comments about the Depew community itself that would be good for the new superintendent to know as they enter. Our students come from diverse backgrounds, and the superintendent should have experience with that makeup. Having an open mind and being accepting and supportive of all, Depew should be a safe place for all students and staff who attend. The Depew area is changing and the new superintendent needs to recognize the diversity of our community. And in terms of the, the theme of working and learning, um, working with parents, students to achieve their goals of learning, that each student should get the attention they need so they can learn more. Need to think about balance and how um, school requirements impact families. And then to continue on uh, the work of building improvements such as air conditioning. Um, superintendent, parents, and children, uh, clear and transparent communication. Um, as you can see, that, that is one of the overarching theme, themes in both questions. Our children's education is the first and foremost important aspect of schools, and um, students need more time to complete homework. Again, some unthemed. We are a small district with great programming. Maintain the moment, momentum educationally. Maintain strong programming K-12 and keeping the beautiful facilities up to date. So on behalf of the board, I would like to thank all of the community members, and I mean the larger community, um, all of those who um, identified themselves within one of those constituent groups, thank you for taking the time to participate in the survey, share your thoughts about uh, attributes for the new superintendent, as well as thoughts that you have um, that will help the new superintendent transition effectively and be successful. And again, all of this information is shared with the board is they engage in the search process. So thank you to the board, thank you to the community, and any questions? All right, thank you.
video. Video? Math department. It is highly anticipated for a math video, so you should run at the chance to put it up there. Let's see if Drew has it. As if Drew's got it. No pressure, Drew. <laughs> side of the equation. Often students will be working through this on a sheet of paper or on a whiteboard. They don't need to be, but some people prefer that. And then at the very last step, we've walked them all the way through the process. They get a little bit of congratulations to help build their confidence. Here, students are asked to sort terms that mean the same thing. So we're looking at domain and range. And move on to the next slide and click check my work. And it will tell them that they had eight out of eight cards sorted correctly. If they didn't, they could move back and try again. This engaging slide shows how to change from a unit circle, looking at the cosine of a function, to a graph where we're plotting the x values all along. So it's just a much more engaging way to see the connection between the unit circle and then a graph. The last slide asks students to reflect on how the lesson went, where they can gauge themselves as if they're really strong in their understanding of the lesson or confused about a few things. And there's a spot for them to type in their specifics of what may have helped them um, along the way or what they might be struggling with. On the teacher end, I can see that Sherry has completed this assignment. If we were working in a classroom, all the students' names would be listed here on the left, and I have the option to anonymize it. So we can see how the class is progressing, but not call anyone out. Check marks indicate that the students answered it correctly, 
dots meant that they had to write something or do something and they answered it correctly. If something was wrong, there would be an X in this space. Julian, that, that technology was new last year, right? We started using it yeah. last year. Um, we really had to understand the capabilities behind the programming right. and to help show if things were right or not and how to design them ourselves. So um, we started using it as an option for hybrid last year, just so kids at home and in person could be doing stuff at the same time. But now we've really made things a lot more um, self-checking along the way and more fun to work with. So learning the programming end of it, yeah, I think I saw it in your classroom last year along with like, three others were using it at the time. The kids are really liking it. Super yeah. engaging. Yeah. Super it's engaging awesome. for the students. Well done. Yeah. Okay, this is the time on our board meeting agenda. The district residents may address the Board of Education with their concerns. Each resident has up to three minutes to address the board. A total of 50 minutes will be allowed for each public forum. Do you have anybody this evening? What up, sir? Just need your name and address, please. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, hello, my name is Rich Reinbaker. I live at 149 Baywood Drive. Um, I'm here, uh, you know, obviously there's a lot of things that are going on, and I have a concern uh, about one of the policies, uh, especially when it comes to COVID, COVID, COVID and vaccinated and returned back to school. Uh, and it's also something that I did contact the CDC about to find out, you know, because I was hoping that I could get clarification because uh, I was pretty dismayed about what the, the policy was. Um, and and I'm, I'm going to give two situations just to sort of compare them to tell me because I, I want to believe that I'm logical in my approach and I want to make sure that you guys do as well uh, or at least have a fair conversation and uh, discussion because, uh, like I said, I'm not here to, to, to fight. I'm, I'm here to, to maybe... Let other people hear a different perspective to maybe push a different narrative. Um, we have two families, and these are actual situations, but I'm not going to use names, obviously. Uh, two families. The family A, uh, whole family's on back state. Four out of six contract COVID. Uh, all the family stays home, follows uh, uh, quarantine protocol uh, for 10 to 14 days, and then returns accordingly. Uh, it's family B, all family members are vaccinated. Four out of six are symptomatic all right, and test positive. Two of the individuals are not symptomatic, uh, do not test positive for COVID. Those two individuals are then allowed to go to school, okay? Um, so we have to look at the pros of those two situations. Situation A, uh, the, the first family, uh, they do their part to mitigate the spread of germs and infectious disease among school population, all right? And then obviously you follow the rules of safe return. Situation B, the vaccinated COVID negative individuals are potentially protected by the vaccine uh, or the severity of the virus themselves. Uh, if they're asymptomatic, okay, they're able to go back to school after getting that original test, but not tested every day. They just have to, by the CDC and schools policy, uh, must be monitored, all right, for signs or symptoms, even though this is a virus that can be asymptomatic, especially to young people. Um, and so then I have to say, is this really safe? Um, and are the practices by each individual or by each group really safe for our community and for our school? In situation A, uh, they do the right thing. All right? They understand, uh, even though they cannot participate in society um, because they are positive, they understand uh, the routes of disease and transmission. Situation B, the vaccinated COVID negative person uh, whose household is, in essence, a hotbed, uh, infected and symptomatic, is now allowed to participate in society. Uh, in which they either can catch from the parents, because that has happened in numerous families as well, where the kids have caught it after several days of being in the house. They then can just carry that and then spread it uh, to others in the classroom. All right, and again, you know, it's under the guides that the school protocol is that they should follow the three-foot rule, keep your mask off uh, in the school, and that is, in essence, the, the protocol that they have to follow in the classroom. And I'm a teacher, and I'll tell you this, that kids do not stay uh, with their masks on all day, nor do they maintain those, uh, COVID, those COVID distances. Um, 
So is this really about safety or compliance? Yes, sir, I just have to interject one second. First of all, yeah. Drew, he fixed his microphone. Oh, it's enough. Okay, and secondly, I need a motion. If we're going to have yeah. you continue, you've exceeded your three minutes. Okay. I need a motion from the board to extend Mr. Ridemaker. Yes, sir. Ridemaker's uh, portion of the public forum beyond the three minutes. So moved. Second. All approved? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Opposed? Go ahead, sir, as soon as honorable. Thank you very much. We're having technical difficulties this evening. Drew's earning a salary this today. <laughs> Should I wait for him? Put you in for no, a we, I, if everybody can still hear you, you were off for you know a little while anyway. Oh boy. Continue right. like. Out of All right. Uh, you know, so then there becomes other concerns, and, and really this is what it's about for me. Uh, that the safety for the students in the classroom is really not there if that is the scenario. Yet policies are allowed to discriminate against the others who uh, do have to follow those policies uh, due to safety. Um, and, and now I ask you to, to sort of think about this as uh, an unvaccinated person who is unvaccinated for a multitude of reasons. Okay, it, it might be personal, medical. Uh, it could be the fact of natural immunity, which is recognized in other countries, but not this currently. Um, you know, as you sit there and you hear these type of policies get enacted, you know, what are you to think? You know, as you're sitting in a classroom or a cafeteria, when, when these policies don't scientifically or logically make any sense, uh, what are they to believe or feel, all right? Uh, is this an, an added level of punishment uh, for those who are not vaxxed? Uh, in essence, being deliberately exposed to a virus as they have to sit into class, all right? Um, and so why are these policies in place? Uh, and, and here's what it does. All right, uh, in my mind, it gives a false sense of security for vaccinated uh, while allowing discrimination and coercion for the unvaccinated. This policy lacks the seriousness, the detail it should, or it is grossly irresponsible, or it could be other things, but I'm not here to, to speculate on those. So I ask you uh, as a board, okay, um, do you agree that this policy being enforced under the guidance of the CDC which is also the Erie County Department of Health, which is where we get guidance, is, safe, is a safe practice. I, I have to clarify, we have to clarify the whole okay. public forum, okay? Okay. Have a discussion, present your concerns, you know, questions and things of that nature, but it's not meant to be a discussion yes. with the board. Okay. Yes, can so I pose that I, question? I appreciate you bringing your concerns yes. to us, Right. okay? But if you're expecting a discourse and you're expecting the board members to respond and say whether the thumbs up or thumbs down of this policy, that's not the purpose of this No, I'm of good this, with that. And, and of, you, of this meeting. But I, mm -hmm. we appreciate you coming and bringing your concerns and expressing them. And we could take that you know, and discuss that as a board with the superintendent if there should be any changes to the policy going forward. But you just asked us a question. Do we think it's good policy or not? Mm -hmm. And I don't know if anybody on this board is going would, to Would anybody lend to? I mean, it's up, it's up to you. I mean, at the end of the day, I do get the, the policy and the rules here. You know, I'm just asking a general statement, and if somebody else could get back to me, I would definitely appreciate that as well. You know, I would love to have this conversation with somebody, uh, you know, because, you know, as I've been going through this process, um, you know, it's like I go to the board to get the voice heard, to get, you know, things and actions, and then I'm told to go to the Erie, part, the Erie County Department of Health, contact them. They then sit there and send me the CDC, go to the CDC on the phone with them for hours. CDC then says you got to go to state. State then sends me back and says it's, it's, they just keep, you know, it was kicked the can down the road. Now it's like kick it down the road and then back and then just keep on recycling. All right. Um, and, and, you know, so, I, I, I'm trying to figure out, you know, what we are to do in this situation because, you know, time is starting to become of the essence. Um, we really, um, there is a lot of power because I've been looking to other people, right? And, and it really comes down to every single person in here. Every single parent, every single member, every community leader, um, these people, we have to step up. I understand that there's a lot of politics that are involved in the situation. I understand that um, there are more than just like, uh, uh, you know, uh, we agree or disagree because there's also like monies and stuff like that involved, right? But what is happening right now, right, and, and for the parents, if we do Sorry, not do to, our part, to, can I just say one last thing, I'll be done. I'm, I did literally it's this a little bit. You know, if we do not act as parents of our community, all right, 
Um, there's right now currently a bill, and, and because most people are sitting back thinking that somebody else is going to pick up the ball and somebody else is going to be the savior, all right? There's a bill called the Assembly Bill, which is okay, 378, have, sir, which is going to force again. vaccinations uh, in white schools or cut the their board. budgets. All right? So, extend this right to Mr. Yeah. Do you have more? Well, yeah. We it was have, just I need over. another motion to ex further extend Mr. Reinbaker's public forum. So moved. Do you have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I'll go over the nine. He, is, he said he has a little left. Yeah, what absolutely. Is. Any, what's that? You can see that about a post. Trustee Bush, yeah. yay or nay? Yay. Trustee Duty? Yay. Trustee Lamarca? Yay. Trustee Law? Yay. Trustee Spencer? Yay. Trustee Young? Yay. Five yay, two nay. So, so what, so that's good. I'm sorry. Not the question? Question of this motion or vote? And I have, we have to have some either yay, nay, or on the question. Do you have any? I do have a question. Hey, do you have any, are there any questions? Yes. Yes. This is not the format, or this is, we had this talk last meeting where the advocacy comes not from the seven of us, but the hundreds of you. Yes, you're here in a forum that you're expressing your concern as well written. We have a lot of stuff there, but we're not the we're not the distribute decision makers. And I understand you got to run around for the Department of Health, the city, SCB, whoever else you call it. But your campaign needs to go that way. But more letters from that, not just from us. We, uh, I'm, I can't say that the board agrees or not disagrees, but we're not the decision makers. We have to follow the policy that's given to us. That's how we. That's what we have to do. We can't be the one, you know, throw the mask away. And your scenario about the two family members from a family that had uh, COVID positive but mm -hmm. two didn't. Is it responsible for those two people to still go to school even though they were in contact with people that were tested positive? I don't know. I'm not a scientist. I'm not a doctor. Don't claim to be one. Don't want to be one. But this is not the forum for. Beating a dead horse, that we need to go with some to a different farm to get our answers or our questions taken to me. Um, I voted yay because I personally don't care if I agree with him or not. I, for, I don't care if he goes a little over. I work for him whether I agree with him or not. If he's going to take his time and come here and talk, as far as I'm concerned, he's being respectful. He can have a couple extra minutes. Thank you, I appreciate that. Yeah, but I think the question is two scenarios. So you're saying the policy that we, the school, are you saying, or you are saying, the policy is that if you're unvaccinated, stay home. But if you are vaccinated, even though you're living in a household full of people that have COVID, you can still come to school. Correct. So you're struggling with that policy. Is that the question? Yeah, I would say that's a part of that our policy. It's the Erie County Department it's, of Health policy. Yeah, you're kind of, okay. That's I the, think you just had a couple of things right. you want to Okay. Say. That's fine. Yeah, and, and so, I mean, it really is, and I understand what you're saying, and, and my revelation, you know, my epiphany is that we, we all keep on saying that, all right? You understand being in the community leadership position, when, when you sit there and push back to the state and say, we're no longer going to let you guys take our school district hostage tied to monies, because that's what it's all about, okay? That's when we start getting real action, and then the people like us start building in their momentum in order to keep reinforcing and backing you guys up because you are on the front line. You're in a higher position of power in our community than we are. Okay, you, Your voice goes further and higher than our voices ever will. Right? And to say that you guys are, I believe you are, and I, I really, I do. And, and at the end of the day, if you use your voice at the level that you can, and I use my voice at the level I can, and I encourage and employ the rest of you as adults to do the same thing uh, before this next bill gets passed, which is going to force a vaccine upon our child if they want to go to school, all right? Which will, if a school does not, and again, I, I don't see how this is not criminal in its action, they will threaten cutting your, your school funding if you do not apply or, or, or abide by those policies, all right? Um, these same people who 
did a review by the FDA board who is now sanctioning this actual vaccine upon children who had a quote and a, and a belief, which is scary to me, which said, we're never going to know or we're never going to learn about how safe this vaccine is unless we start giving it. Eric Rubin, FDA board reviewer, right? I don't know about you, but the world I live in, we don't shove the kids to the front line. We don't sit there and say, hey, uh, we're going to let you guys be the, the guinea pigs and the lab rats and figure this out. Okay, and as an adult, it is our job to protect those kids at all costs. All right, now we're getting to that point where it's getting real. And many parents who think, who are just sitting back, you think that somebody else is going to do this job, you need to do that. Whether it's the people in this room, I implore you. Whether it's the people watching online, start doing it. Because if we stay asleep, okay, you're now going to see our children become the actual guinea pigs to a, a vaccine. Uh, which is ultimately my big scare. That is my line, okay? And so that is my concern. Like I said, I'm not here to meet me against you, a community against you. I believe that we are a force that should be working together, all right? And I think we all have different points of view, but I think at the very end of the day, we should not let our children be the ones that are on the front line of this battle, especially for testing. Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Three minutes left. If there's anybody else that want to come up to this public forum, anybody here? Okay, thank you. I now have a motion of the Board of Education by the recommendation of the superintendent to approve the consent agenda items as presented. So moved. Second. Do you have any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Just to new business. We have a motion of the Board of Education upon the recommendation of the superintendent to approve the Depew High School Leadership and Academy of Finance students to attend Disney Youth Education Series in Orlando, Florida, January 25th through and including January 29th, 2022. The purpose of the trip is for students to learn about the Disney leadership model while interacting with staff. There will be no cost to the district. Not even, is this over a... Yes. Is it Regents Week? Is that why there's no cost for subs? No. Okay. Anybody want to make a motion? Okay. So, so. Second. Second. Any questions? Kind of. Go ahead. Do um, they need any board members to come? <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess I'm not with. Yes, yeah, you your mic. Sorry. In the state of the, the way things are right now with the uncertainty of all of the COVID stuff, would, would we be held legally responsible for anything if it should happen on this? You're always assuming a level of liability no matter what when the kids travel. Uh, and we have to follow all of those protocols that Disney has put forward. However, their parents have also signed the permission slips. I'm just, yep. I'm just playing devil's advocate. Yep. I mean, I'll, I'll chime in on that. I mean, we're sitting here talking about my parents they have a choice. Hit your mics, please. Hit your lawn. Hit your side, please. The, chair, the parents have obviously agreed for the kids to go, so. Personal choice. They have you want the choice, then you get the choice. Otherwise, they don't get the choice. Make up your mind. How are they traveling? Boston Plate? Yeah. So, a couple schools are going together. Steve Volk. Steve vote. Nick, the, the bus ride is 24 hours. So I'm, I'm hours. on four from <laughs> the Air and ground. Probably air and then buses to the ground there. Any other questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Two, we have a motion the Board of Education upon the recommendation of the Superintendent be it resolved that the Board of Education of the Pew Union Free School District hereby award the following capital project contracts based upon review and consideration of bid response timely received by the district and authorize a young and right architectural to prepare and issue a notice to proceed. So I'll do the second. Get Todd Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Motion carried.
I have a motion to the Board of Education upon the recommendation of the Superintendent of Prove Erie County Erie Bus Incorporated, DBA Western New York Bus Company, as a contract bus carrier for the 2021-22 school year at the rate of $448 per day. That's it. So moved. Second. Any questions? Sir? Just a quick question. I, I know it's on here because busing is just short of bus drivers. I don't envy everyone having to deal with that situation. Um, how many um, <laughs> bus routes do we have to use them for? Just out of curiosity. Do you know about that? I'm not expecting you if you don't. Right now it's just one. Just one? Oh, it's just, okay. It's just a, it's an out of district run. Oh, better we've, than I better than I thought. But but we've done this even prior to the bus route. Oh okay. we, we've negotiated this over several years ago okay. seven years. Let's just, I was just curious how what situation it's we're just in. a formal process to for the board to appear yeah. so we can get transportation. Any other, questions? Any other questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Number four. We have a motion to the Board of Education by the recommendation of the superintendent to approve Aftercare Nursing Incorporated as the contractor for nursing <coughs> services on a bus for the 2021-22 school year at the rate of $30 per hour. So moved. Second? Second. Second. Okay. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Motion carried. <coughs> Public forum. This is the time of the board meeting agenda when district residents may address the Board of Education with their concerns. Each resident is up to three minutes to address the board. A total of 15 minutes will be allowed for each public forum. Anybody else? Thank you. Comments and remarks by board members? Go ahead. Um, first off, I just want to commend, I just want to put a shout out to the Kiga Heights uh, PTO. Not just because my wife's on the board, I wasn't put up to it. Um, just that I will say I volunteered to assist in organizing after the uh, orders came in for the one of the fundraisers. And just the amount of work that the Cayuga Heights PTO, it's a small group of parents that are doing it, just how active they're being. I just want to give them a shout out. Just it's amazing the amount of fundraising and their activities they're trying to do throughout this. So I just wanted to put that out there. Um, and the second thing is, I just had a comment on the public forums. Um, I, ever since we had, I believe it was the September meeting where we had a lot of people for the public forum, um, it got, it, to me it seemed a little disjointed on we, how we handled having the amount of people we had. Um, I looked into what other districts do. Um, local districts. I watched several of their meetings online on YouTube, like really on the same channel. And I just think we could think about having a sign-in sheet for the individuals when they first come in if they want to speak, because then if we know ahead of time that we're going to have more than the time allots in there, according to our according to our board policy uh, manual, we can vote to extend it. It would be good to know ahead of time that hey, we have. 30 minutes total of time, but we have 15 people that want to talk. So instead of calling and saying, hey, are there pe people here, people here, and then we get to a point where we have to vote it, we would know ahead of time of that and we could vote beforehand so it doesn't look disjointed, it's organized, it keeps it civil. Um, I have a feeling we're going to have a lot more people coming. Um, personally, I love the public forum. I don't care if I agree with the people or, or not that, that, show, that show up. We work for them, it's their right, and I'm glad that people come. But just, and then another thing, if they had a sign in sheet, they could also put their address. They don't have to announce their address over a YouTube video. We would have their address to show that they're a district. Again, several other local districts do it this way. They have a sign in sheet, they know how many people are going to be talking so they can do it organized, and if they're going to be over the allotted time, they can vote on it ahead of time. Um, it is in our policy manual that we can do it that way. Um, and like I said, it's also in the state policy manual that you can do it that way. And I know several districts, at least five of the videos that I watched online of meetings do it that way as well. They have a sign-in sheet. They know ahead of time so they can keep it organized. I think maybe one of the issues during September is we kind of, we didn't know how many people were talking. We almost kind of cut somebody off and got a little thing. This would just help avoid that in the future. That's my two cents.
I just wanted to say from September to now, thank you to those community members who have come in, voiced their concerns. I know it's been difficult as we try to come back um, full time for the school year. Um, and it is in our shoes, know that, you know, we understand that it is difficult and um, we try to do everything that we can as a board. Dr. Ramey um, and the superintendents are constantly trying to voice their opinions and do what we can for the students, for the community. We hear you, um, but we can only do so much um, as our hands are tied. Um, but I thought what I could do as I was trying to reflect, um, knowing that I'm a teacher, just like the rest of the teachers here, um, it's been a difficult year, um, more challenging than what I thought it would be. I was excited to go back come September, five days a week. Um, I know my students have been very excited to be back five days a week. Um, and be face-to-face, -face, have that instruction that they missed. You can't do justice trying to teach students through the computer. Um, so what I wanted to do in November, because it is a month where we look back and we try to be thankful for the things that we have, um, is take the time to um, think about the things that from September till now, what are we thankful for? And I asked my daughter and I asked some of her friends um, as well as some of my friends to give me some information as to what are the important things that you're thankful for. And some of the things that came to the forefront were, we're thankful for the administration, um, for our superintendent and all the administrators, for all that they've done, for all the hard work from over the summer with everything changing, from everything from September till now, trying to get everything so that the students can be here, remain here, um, all the thinking out of the box, um, especially with homecoming, so that could go off and the students could enjoy that. Um, with the dance, with being able to have the motorcade, to have spirit week all the time and the effort that went into that. I know my daughter being a freshman, it was the most exciting week for her. She really got into it. She was thankful that that was able to go off. She played in the powder puff game. Um, that was very exciting, even though it was really cold and rainy and wet. Um, I was thankful that they, the freshmen lost so we could go home <laughs> and we didn't have to sit there for a second game. Um, to all the teachers and all the hard work that they put in, it has been an exhausting year. I feel like it's March already and it's only November. Um, we're stressed out, we're burnt out um, after a year and a half of doing this. It's been a lot. Um, we're trying to keep track of the kids, make sure they're doing okay, but we're just as stressed and going through the anxiety that they are, trying to take care of our own families. I'm thankful that I go home to a daughter that I don't have to get on that does her work and um, I don't have to battle that because I wouldn't have the energy when I get home. So thank you to all the teachers, all the support staff that constantly come in and give it their all. and are working with the students in the classroom, working with those students that are quarantined, those students that are absent, those students that are suspended. You know, as you try to juggle all of that, it's not easy. Thank you to the parents that are constantly supporting everything that we're doing in school, that we're doing to try to keep the kids where they are. I know it's not easy. I know wearing the masks is not what we want for our kids, but if it's the one sacrifice that we have to make, to keep our students in class five days a week, to allow them to be there with their friends, to have the socialization that they need and that they desire. I know I asked my daughter, she loves the fact that she can be back here. She can have her sports back. She doesn't want the mask on, but she's gotten to the point where she's so used to it that she doesn't care. She said, if it's one sacrifice I have to make, I'll do it. Thank you to the custodians for everything that they do every single day to keep these buildings sanitized, cleaned, to all of our cafeteria workers who are there every day distributing breakfast and lunch to our children. It's been amazing that they can come in every day and get breakfast and lunch. My daughter's all about the apple juice. She doesn't care about the breakfast or the lunch as long as she can get her apple juice every morning. She was trying to figure out how to get extra apple juice. Um, but that's all she cares about. But it's so nice. I've heard so many positive comments about being able to get that lunch. And to our bus drivers for being there for the kids, making sure that they're getting here safely. 
you know, I appreciate that. I appreciate everything that this, this district does. And coming from Depew, being a wildcat myself, I am very thankful that my daughter has the opportunity to be here to go through and have the amazing teachers and programs. We are very lucky as a Depute district to have all these opportunities for our students. So I hope that, I know that we've got the challenges um, through the pandemic, but I hope if it's taught us one thing, um, to be flexible, to take and take a look at those hurdles and those obstacles and try to make those opportunities and, uh, instead of always looking at those as negatives for us. And be thankful for what we have um, and, and not take those things that we have for granted. Um, I know that we would love to snap our fingers and go back to what we considered normal, and we're trying to get there, um, but we're not there yet, and we're continuing to do the best that we can as a board, as a district. We're really trying to work hard for our students as well as our community. I'll be brief. Um, as a teacher in another district as well, um, my son just started kindergarten at Cuba and is absolutely loving it. Um, and I'll be, I agree with everything Amy has said. I'm just going to add that really what I've noticed this year, even despite the mass, is the kids' engagement. As opposed to last year, I teach science. So to be able to have the kids get excited about doing hands-on activities again, because they have loosened the restrictions. Last year, even when they were in person, it was so cumbersome to clean the science equipment the way it needed to be done under the guidelines that my, my students missed out. They missed out. There's things you can't do on a computer screen. Um, so the excitement in the classroom and, like Amy said, the excitement to be engaged in clubs that are not virtual meetings. They're in-person in meetings. To be able to have an outdoor dance, which they thought was a blast because normally it would have been indoors. Yeah, it was cold and it was rainy, but they all looked forward to it. Um, so, and other than that, I, I, I agree with everything Amy has said. Yeah, I, got, I got a couple of things. We uh, had a little input on at the lunch, some frustration around the lunches, but I, I do want to, and I uh, talked to my granddaughter about it, and she is, uh, can't stop talking about how good the lunches are at the middle school, so I wanted to give a shout out to her. coming up and we're able to look at it. It's a good project. We are going to get a better bank for the buck. Support the project. And then the last thing, just based off that, I, I know we've talked a lot about what people want us to do. Uh, I'll tell you where I'm at personally so people know where I stand. Uh, I respect your positions. Your positions are fine. You're entitled to believe what you want. I'm entitled to believe what I want. Um, I won't do anything that puts the kids being here in jeopardy. And I definitely will not advocate for anything that puts the school's fiscal uh, life in jeopardy. And we got to remember what district we're in, what community we're in, what our school district's uh, wealth ratio is. This is not a community that can go and be cavalier. And that needs to be kept in mind. It's great to want to fight, but there's a cost to every fight. And we keep that in mind. I just make a couple points. Um, uh, if I could implore community members, that if you're unsatisfied with anything to do with the school, if you would reach out uh, to the teacher that you want to have a conversation with or the administration. Um, as a teacher myself, I would rather have you come to me and have a hard conversation than go to my principal or superintendent. Um, I, I love when they reach out to me because almost 99% of the time we can figure out a, a plausible solution. Um, and I will right up admit that I did something wrong if I did. Um, so please just give the, the staff the opportunity to make things right um, before putting it on social media or whatever it might be. Um, and then uh, we had several students in my district out uh, quite a few for COVID, and I, I was trying to find a way, those students that are at home, if their parents not on them, 
who knows what work is going to get done. Um, so I've been racking my brain for several days. Is there something that we could possibly do to make it a little easier? And I don't know, is there like a homework club at the middle school, do you know? Is there any way that a, is there any way that a student is there any way um, that a student who is on quarantine could Teams or Zoom call to one of those people that are being paid to supervise that if they needed help with questions or something? I'm trying to figure out a way where if a kid was at home and wanted to get help and their parents could help them that they could still have that opportunity. I know many of the teachers, at least at the middle school, that videotape their lessons and they're also communicating through Schoology and Oh, there's office hours, like where the, the teachers will do open office hours as you're doing the yeah, difficulty. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I record lessons too, but that's like, I mean, if I was watching a foreign language video, there's no way I'd be able to learn that, that <laughs> language by watching a video, unfortunately. But I just, just trying to figure out a way that we can help those students who are not allowed to come to school to get every chance, opportunity that they can to get what they need to keep plugging along because I know it's got to be frustrating not being here doing five subjects, minimum five subjects, probably an hour for each class. Excuse me, each class. Um, I mean, I feel for those kids. But yeah, that's a good resource if we need, needed that. You know, more comfort. Yeah. Um, all right, last up. Um, our legislative people have gone to do the things they had last month. Sign up to go to the legislative breakfast. That's where we are. We meet with the um, local legislators that talk to and control our destiny, if you want to call it. Um, right, we see Dave Little's program. Um, I don't, didn't mean to be, you know, that's what I'm looking for. Negative to what your comments are, and they're very well talked about, and have some. Proper thought process behind, but maybe going to the PTSO with your thing to get the bigger numbers of people. Like I said, our seven emails to one of our legislators, or seven emails from that people group again. Um, we just voted a couple of weeks ago. That's where the power is. That's where they want to hear from you. You know, they want your votes. So you're going to be uh, someone going to be. Politically active, get a group of people to write letters say, Look, we don't agree with this. And they're one person in that group of whatever they are in their legislature or their someone, whatever you call them. But that's where we've got to go as a, a big group. Um, I've sent, I send emails probably two times a week to certain people about the same policies. Um, I could write a, I could write a book, I'm not that good, but I have some of the same. Uh, Thought processes, what works, what doesn't work, why does this mean, what does it matter? I just came back from California, I had to show up the next car to go to a grocery store. Um, wearing a mask, you know, so different states are, they have much stricter policies than we have, but you know, we have to live with what we got. They, the, the direction that comes to us is the direction that comes to us. We don't, we don't make the rules, we have to follow them. So if the rules change, bigger numbers of people, Send them letters in, talk to people, make phone calls. They have every one of these legislators or senators or whatever have an aide that will take calls. You know, some of them I'm first name basis with, some they change every once in a while so they don't know who we are anymore, but that's what you got to do. So appreciate your, your time and your the research you did. It's probably took you quite a while, but I appreciate what, you, what you're saying. So next, uh, board members, just want to echo the, the thankfulness that we have. I'm sure everybody that's watching and here in person and on video, a happy Thanksgiving, a safe Thanksgiving. Um, we say a socially distant Thanksgiving. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, so I now have a motion to enter an executive session to discuss the employment history of a particular individual with no action to follow. 
So moved. Second. Bush and Lamarco. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Motion carried. We have a motion to appoint Todd Bush as pro temp clerk, so District Clerk Jessica Neichel may be excused. Enthusiastically moved. Seconded in this All in favor? Aye. Motion carried. We're now in executive session.